Hi, Duck. So today I'm going to show you how to create a competition pink and white because when I go to judge these competitions, I get so many questions and I just thought it'll be easier to do a video and help you guys and share my knowledge with you. So let's get cracking. So I'm using the Aliana thumb. Now you will always notice that a thumb is bigger, isn't it, Duck, than a finger? So your thumb will be quite challenging. However, certain competitions require you to paint the thumb and the pinky finger in a red polish. But I would always start your pink and white application with your thumb because it's gonna be one of the most difficult and it gets you in the flow of creating a pink and white. Some people don't bother. It depends how good you are and how quick you are at creating a pink and white competition nail. Some people just do a cup of pink on those and that's fine. But there are some competitions where if there is, um, it's very rare that this would happen, but if there's a tie, they will take off that polish and have a look at the French underneath. Mm. It's very rare, but it has happened before. Um, but starting, if you started here to do your pink and white, pink and white, pink and white, by the time you get to this one, this one will be your better one because you've got into the flow of it. So for me, I would always do a pink and white on these two just to get you in the flow get you get because then you'll notice that the room temperature will be different especially if you're competing early in the morning you're in an exhibition center where it's cold so i would always have a warm mat underneath so you could have a heated mat you can buy heated mouse mats you can buy the ones that crack and they go warm oh, yeah. you know them like yeah. what you the heated ones so anything that's heated you could have that on your desk to help or if you're used to working in a cold environment, that's fair enough. But you have to take into consideration the warmth of that room. And it's always gonna be cold in the morning. If the air con hasn't been put on as well, it's gonna be cold and there won't be no dust particles. There's lots of things like dust particles in the air and things like that to consider. Okay, so we're gonna break down this nail and we're gonna show you exactly what we want to see as judges in a pink and white competition. So if you were doing professional beauty, you can do um, any system, whether that is a um, curable LED product, whether that's gel or acrogel, you can do acrylic as well. So they don't allow um, dipping systems or like your full cover tips. That's not a thing. We wanna see you produce a pink and white nail. And you can also do a tip and app, a tip application for the Pro Beauty, or you can do a sculpt. Whereas Nail Olympia, you'll be required to do a sculpted nail. They have different, they have a tip and overlay one and they have a sculpted one. So it's always really important to read the rules. And I know that it's long winded. Now, if you struggle to concentrate for any length of time, a bit like me, uh, like I don't read books, because I just haven't got the brain capacity to store the information when I read. So what I do is I get it on my phone and I highlight it. And then if you tap, you can press speak and you can let it read it to you. And I can absorb the information better by that. So that's what I do um, because I just can't read long winded stuff. Just can't do a duck. It's not for me. So I'm going to show you how to sculpt a pink and white nail. So our sculpting forms are for extreme and also shorter nails. So I'm going to take out this tab. I don't need to do an extreme nail, so I'm going to pop it here. If you wanted to do longer, the tab would go over this perforation line. Can you just about see that perforation line? Yeah. You would put it over that and that's going to remain, it's going to help reinforce it and it'll all be nice and seamless. Uh, but we can take this off, so we literally just bend this. Yeah, and who's me thinking that a competition nail was like, get long? It will be long, but not... Not extreme long. Not extreme oh, long. Okay. Yeah. Find something new every day. So, we are going to roll this in our thumbs. Some competitions you can already pre-roll 
your sculpting forms some you can't you've got to take them straight from the roll always read the rules and some rules may change from year to year as well so even if you've been doing it for years always reread just in case there's been a slight change so you can see we have a curve already and then we're going to bring those two tabs together and make sure that they meet perfectly okay once they're met perfectly we're going to do a square nail it's always advised to do a square nail for a competition nail some st some competitions state that they want to see a comp that they want to see a square nail if it's a salon competition where you don't need to do a pink and white especially for professional beauty competitions then you don't need to do a square nail however you will always get more points for a square nail because the judges find it easier to score because they can see the C curve of the structure of the nail. So as I'm looking at this now, I'm looking at that line in the middle and I'm just making sure it is going to run through the center of the nail and the, the entire finger. So we're looking at the knuckle as well as the nail because if it's off center at all, it's gonna throw everything off. And I literally just squeeze it there. I don't completely close it at this point. At this point, I want to check if it is straight. And I think it's going this way a little bit. So I would then reposition that a little bit have a look at it again so you're going to get the hand and turn the hand and then what you want to do is check can you see that the sculpting form lifts up so it lifts up slightly so we can get a deeper c curve so if we look at this, I mean, pretend this is a natural nail, you want to see where the highest point of this natural nail is. And the highest point of that natural nail needs to follow all the way to the end. And that's where your product would go. Side walls need to be completely straight, straight with the nail fold. So with that channel there, it needs to be completely straight. So the longer the nail you do, the less of a kick up you need to do. You can actually, if you're going to go a little bit shorter, you could bring this down a little bit. You want to see an extended nail bed. So I'm going to extend the nail bed to about here and bring it up. How do you decide that? So we're going to decide how we're going to do the smile line by looking at where the natural nail finish is. Natural nail finish is here. So we are literally going to sneak up onto this part here, or the deepest part of our smile line. So I'm gonna mark that here. You don't need to do this in a competition. I'm marking it for your benefit. So can you see that's gonna be the highest point of our ears or wings, whatever you wanna call them, the pointy bits are going to go to there. And then we're gonna bring the deep smile line to about here. So now if we think we're gonna to go to here, how long is that gonna be? So if I measure this, that's gonna be about 23 mil. Now if I put this here at the side of where this highest point is going to be, I now need 23 mil of length, not from here, not from here, from this point. So 23 mil will take me just there. Can you see? Oh, sorry, I'm coming with the five. We're going to put that, yeah. So 23 mil will go just there. Yeah. 
So if I go in between four and five, I've got a bit of filing room, yeah? And that's what you want to do on all of them. So it's really important to know your model, know their nail beds, know how long their nail beds are. Ah, right, so this is how you can, this is taking a while, and obviously you don't have, you've only got, did you say an hour? For the Pro Beauty one, you have an hour and 15 minutes to do one hand. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, so you would you would need to know all of this stuff beforehand. Beforehand. So when the, the, the start that's good and goes off, mm -hmm. you can just fish, bash, bosh. Yeah, it's so important to practice this. You've got to practice it. You've got to know what your model's hands. You can even do it on your own hand because you're only doing one hand. And so if you know your hand and you know from this point here to the cuticle, it's say 19 mil, then you know that it's this, probably going to be the same on these two fingers at least. Maybe this one. You want to know the millimetres on all of your nail beds so you can make them all look the same. Now ideally, you want them to all be the same length apart from we can lose one mil here and we can lose one mil here. These two need to be the same length, okay? Same length, same length, one mil shorter, yeah? Now, the, sometimes there's a requirement of, um, if it's like a competition nail that's doing design work, sometimes they need to be four centimeters long or they need to be four inches long. So that might be the entire length of the nail. But the reason that we're doing these measurements is so we have continuity throughout the full set. So you haven't got some that have got a really big smile line, some have got a little smile line. The smile lines need to look aesthetically pleasing and as close to each other as you can. There's gonna be a mil or two mil difference in these nails. Um, so it's important to know the nail bed length and know your free edge length. When the lengths are measured, we measure all of the lengths as well. So each one's got to match. So these two need to match. Index, ring, match. Thumb, middle, need to match. This will be at least a millimeter shorter than this. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's really important to have somebody with good nail beds. And if you had somebody with nail beds that has, say, 19 millimeters, 19 millimeters, 19 millimeters, 18 millimeters, that's a good, that's a good nail bed to work on. It is important. Don't get me wrong. You can't find a model like that. You can work with it. That's your aim. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, knowing the nail bed of the person that you are working on is important. Knowing if their nail bed has a natural downward hook or if they have a natural ski jump. You know, this is all important because it will make a difference on the appearance of the nail. Obviously we have Neil Yannis, she's got quite a decent nail. And if we look here, we can kind of see where the square is going to fit. I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit more. So when we are looking at the form fit, we want it to sit no wider than the natural nail. So can you see, we're no wider than the natural nail itself. If it does that, you'll get fanning. What, what about the fact that it tapers in towards the end? Well, if you look at this here, mm -hmm. we are going to pinch. Ah, right, okay. So that'll pinch in. Okay. I'm going to just clean those little marks because we don't need them, do we? Then we'd go on with primer. What's really important as well is to have your model's nails, cuticles already done. They all need to be nice and prepped beforehand. If you have any cuts 
on the model's nails before you start the competition. Make sure you let the floor judge know because they'll come round, they'll mark it on and they'll support. There's a cut here, 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 and here, pre-done before the competition. So then you won't get marked down for it. That's mega important because you're gonna lose points for something that's already been there. You know, sometimes you have a model that's knocked the hands, cut the hands, I don't know, chewed the fingers, could be anything. Or the damage was done, you know, a few days before and it's just not healed fully yet. So the, there are those things that need to be taken into consideration. That definitely happened this weekend. One of the models didn't say that they'd already been cut. So, make sure you talk. I'm gonna use glass slippy, super, super, super thin. And I'm not gonna use it very dry. It's gonna be a medium to wet consistency. And what we're doing is we're bridging the form to the nail, nice and thin. If you do this too thick, it will interfere with your white when you put that on. So it needs to be super thin. And then we need to make sure we come straight. Now don't worry if it goes too high. We want to bridge the gap because we definitely want a straight side wall so if you take it too low, fair enough, but try and take it either exactly or slightly higher because we don't want this edge to interfere with our white application. So it's better to keep that super thin. And so just keep smoothing it over. This is the area that needs to have a bridge of product. Super thin though. And if a pink and white competition scares you, then try the salon competition because we don't have to do them as long. However, we do love seeing the long nail and you don't need to do your pink and whites, it's just cover pink. So you can just concentrate on the structure. So that would be a really good competition for you to sort of start at, even if you are a student. So if we look and we see we're nice and thin, the application is super thin. Then I'm gonna use burlesque because it's super pigmented and we want to make sure that we extend the nail bed and we can't see through it. You know, if we can see through it, you have gotta start to lose marks. So if I pull up the score sheet, and this is for professional beauty. So we've got three sections here that get judged. So we've got equal lengths, okay? Then we've got free edge shape matches across hands. So we haven't got some that are fanned. We haven't got some that are narrow. The free edge shape is the same. Apex, the apex placement needs to be in the same place throughout the entire set. So even if you do old school, where you put the apex in the middle. You're not gonna get marked down for it because they're all in the same place. But if you do a more European style where it's in the back third of the nail, you'll, you'll still get good points as well. As a judge, I find that more aesthetically pleasing and it looks nicer. So subconsciously, I, you know, my, your points may go up. Um, C curve, we'll go through that when we've done the structure. Smile lines consistent. Extended nail beds, have you extended the nail bed? Product control, no bubbling, clouding. Nail bed, product application. Yep. Um, so the density of the color, you know what I was saying to you? We don't want to see through the nail. So you need density of color, crisp smile lines. White tip, is the density of the color good or is the shadows, is some a bit, a bit see-through? Um, side walls. Correctly shaped, no bulking. You don't want any, you know, excess product on there. The polish application is that neat around the cuticle areas and side walls. Is it smooth? Is it dense? Is it shiny? 
and then we've got your tip and form fit is that done correctly so is it wonky or not is it misshaped um product flush cuticle area so you don't want it to be flooded you want it to look like it's growing from the nail side walls product flush as well so does it does it meet the side walls or have you filed that away um product finish scratches dents bumps the line of light i'll show you that as well once we've done it um cuticle area the condition of the proximal nail fold all cuticle removed so is the cuticle gone and is the proximal nail fold in good condition or has it been cut that was always my downfall Cutting. yeah because i'm just too i'm too heavy-handed <laughs> So that was something I had to work on. So if we look at this, it's very thin. And if you think about pinching and things like that, this is very thin, even though this will be pretty set, it will still pinch because it's so thin. Yeah, that's how thin it needs to be. Now, if you come to this and you think, oh, it's, it's a bit bulky in areas and it's gonna mess up your application of your extended nail bed or the white free edge you can you know you can soften it with a file if you think any of it's lumpy bumpy you can always add you can always sorry give that a file but be very gentle because it's very thin you know so you can if you if you're unhappy with anything so we're going to do i've got fluff on there now Get rid of that. We're going to do the nail bed extension first. We're going to use burlesque. Then drain off any excess, excess, excess liquid. We're going to go from side to side. And you can see we've already got a rounded edge here. And we can start to create a smile line. Blend this back. Make sure you've got those ears nice and neat. And we're creating a wall of product for your smile line. So what I would do, I would get all that clear on first, on every single nail. Then you know, you're kind of safe. If you need any tiny beads, you can go quite high into the pot to get a tiny bead. If you need to add that to these winged areas or your highest point of this smile line. You want to check both sides. And then I'm going to go in with strip tease. Strip tease is a little bit more transparent. So it's not transparent, but it has a transparency. I'm going to pop that on, tipping the finger down so I don't flood the cuticle. I can just pat and press that towards the cuticle. And then I can bring this down, feather it over. And 
I'm using the brush at a 45 degree angle so I know that this is being lifted to create an apex. Then I can go flat from there. So I went from this angle to this angle. So we have, can you see this apex here? Mm -hmm. We have a wall of product here. just want to put a tiny bit more here, quite wet, just so I know I've got a little bit to file against. And then I would go and do that on all the other nails. Mm. So you get into you're the doing, rhythm. Like, you're doing each stage on all Yes, of them. yeah. Because you'll get quicker as you do that. Once this starts to set a little bit, I'm going to check how sticky they are. We're a little bit sticky, a little bit sticky at the moment. Because if I squidge this on, now I'm just going to squish it all. I don't want to squish it. No squishing is needed. And usually by the time you've done the smile line on this one, you can come back to this and pinch, depending how hot the room is. If it's cooler, it's going to take less time to set. There's a reason we do this in this order because this and this on a real person with body heat will set at the same time. So this is further away from the finger, so it'll take longer to set. This is on the finger, so it'll set quicker because of the body heat. Mm -hmm. Is that why they used to do, do the because you're doing the reverse method at the moment, aren't you? Yes, I'm so doing the, reverse application. Do the other way. Yes. Because the white would set as at the that same takes time. The longest to set. Because it's further away. Yeah. So yeah. they would do the white first and work backwards. Yes. So that everything kind of set all at the same time. Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. So the traditional way would be doing the white first and sweeping it out, sweeping it out, and sweeping it out, and sweeping it out. We did do a video of short nail of that once, didn't we? A long time ago. So yeah. what was, the, what was the, the, the reason to change it? Tom Holcomb changed it all. He did it. Yeah. Tom Holcomb did um, that application and it took off. Yeah. It's brilliant. And different people in different parts of the world do different applications. So, the Japanese do traditional. Because, I feel like they do this because the majority of Japanese people have the most kick-ass nail beds I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Their models that they bring have like 25, 26 mil nail beds. They are, and some of them might even be longer. I'm just like, and it makes the job easier mm -hmm. especially for doing the traditional application it's just honest i was like those nail beds are enormous you should see them honest to god absolutely incredible so we give that a pinch now because it was safe to pinch so then i'll be working on another one while that's pinching so i'm going to take a brand new 100 grit paper for our metal, it's a metal centre board. So this is a normal file. You see, it's got a it's got a plastic centre board of a different colour. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was plastic. Yeah, plastic centre board, so it's more flexible. Yeah, and then this one is metal, so obviously it's it's, it's not so flexible. I'm just going to use a buffer to create a bit of a platform for my metal center board. I'm gonna take my fingers either side like this. So you're gonna sit that down onto your file. Little tap and it's stuck. So now we have a file that's super sharp. So be careful of the side walls of your model. But well, because it's super sharp, it's going to help you really get into these side walls here or this 
E part. Same on this side. So if you feel like your smile line's not quite perfect, your filing will help. So imagine you're filing like an almond shaped nail. That's the shape that we want to see in that smile line. Then 240 grit file, literally just going to smooth because there will be demarcations that the product will sit in. And believe it or not, that'll make a difference to how crisp it is. Really? Yeah. So the reason that we do the clear first is so we can do this. If you take your brush that's damp with acrylic liquid and you come round here, around that smile line, you'll able to really see if your smile line is going to be crisp. And I feel like... Huh? So I get that. Dust it off. Check. And then we can do the white. So, white lightning is our white. And we're going to go to here, aren't we? I said we're going to go between four and the five. It will look quite dry on first appearances. And we're going to move this up to the smile line at this point. Now it's really moldable. And you want to stroke it. Stroking it will help you pull any bubbles out. 
How long, like, does a does polymerization take, like, to be? For it to be mouldable. Well, with the white, our white is mouldable for longer. It's the longest one, so this is this is going to move for a lot longer than say the cover pinks or the clear. Yeah. So this will probably move for around 40 seconds to a minute. Whereas the other ones, you've probably got 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. Well, in the first 10 seconds, this, the deci this decision making needs to happen. So I'm gonna add another bead and I, pick, I need to pick it up exactly the same as I've just done. If I don't, you will see shadowing. And I'm adding more because I need some more at the sides. Get rid of that a little bit. I'm going to let that just fall. I can stroke the centre because that's fine. We didn't need a massive amount there. But this is where we need. Now you'll probably find when you do um, the fingers and not the thumb, you'll be able to do this in one bead. But your thumb, you know, unless you've got a humongous brush, you're going to struggle. And depending on the length of the nail, the natural nail, the length of that natural nail bed, that will have a bearing on how many beads that you have to use for your white. Ideally, if you can do it in one bead, that is always the best option because you're only picking up one bead and you're not having to um, know exactly how you picked that bead up. Because you'll get inconsistencies in the white. So you get shadowing. Maybe you're going to add any Make sure you bleed off any monomer from your brush. I'm just going to let that sit there and then let it do its thing and then I can mess around with it if I need to. Make sure you're checking your side walls. Looking down the barrel of the nail as well. Whenever you're filing, make sure that you cover up your powders and your liquid because you don't want to be filing, especially if you're in a tight space and I started filing now, then that is gonna get covered in bits of nail filings and everything. If you're picking up nail filings that are in the liquid, you might not see them to the naked eye, but they'll affect how you actually, how the product works. So as I look at this, I can sort of touch it and see how sticky it is. It's still quite sticky at this stage. I'll be doing my other one. I'll be cracking on with my other nail. So when you're looking at measurements, what we're looking at is, so from the cuticle area, down we've got 23 mil and then from this high point down so we adjust 25 we've got a bit of filing room which is always nice to have a bit of a bit of a buffer what i don't want to see and what lots of judges don't want to see is measuring from here and doing like 23 mil to there it'll just make this nail look humongous and there's more white than there is pink does that make sense you want to measure from here to here and here to here that makes it look aesthetically pleasing you can pinch here if you need to so i would come behind with the pinching tool 
if you wanted to pinch this area. We can pinch the lateral length if you want to, but be careful because you don't want to make it too narrow at this edge it needs to be. Perpendicular, all the way. Yeah. So you gotta be careful because of the shape of the pinching tool. And you wanna make sure when you pinch, you don't put it on and it makes a mark. So you can like test pinch. But because we've already done a bit of pinching, there really won't be a lot that you need to do. And if your sculpting form is perfect, then there won't be a lot you can do. So I'm pinching with both thumbs now, and I'm kind of doing that. And I'm just kind of testing how bouncy the product is. Because I want to know, can I pull it off? Don't get me wrong, when you've done all of them, you'll, you'll, you'll be to the point where you can pull them off. And when I say pull off, I don't mean pull the nail off. I mean take the form off. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I had images of you all ripping the nails off then. So we can take the form off. And then, can we file, are we safe? Yes, we can file. So also it's important to have everything prepped beforehand, like seasoning your files or taking off the sharp edges. I like to use a little section of our replaceable file papers just to take off that sharp edge. So all this can be done before the competition. One other thing I want to tell you as well is if it's just a sculpting competition, so like um, Nail Olympia, for instance, you cannot have glue on your desk. You might think you want to have a bit of glue on your desk in case you snap it off or you want to repair it. You can't have glue on your desk. It will be confiscated. Wouldn't you be able to see that as a glue? Some, well, some people are very good at disguising. Mm. But then if they put it on, they might lose points some, in some area, but they might gain points in a different area on the score sheet. So it might be worth them even just sticking it on. I've, I've been competing before and smashed the, smashed the end off. Mm. And I've had to sculpt it back on. Oh. Quick time. So, side walls. Get them nice and straight. Cuticle area, nice and neat, flush. Don't forget you get and get marks for that. You get points for it. So if you think of your nail about the consistency, everything needs to be consistent throughout. That is what you're going to get points on, being consistent. I'm going to go back to this under grip file. And I can start coming over. I'm not going to touch the apex at this point. I'm going to go up this side. I'm going to turn my finger just so I can access it a little bit easier. But if you know like that this is going to be painted in white, this is where you shouldn't be panicking too much about any kind of colouring or anything like that. But like I said, this is your thumb would be your practice finger and so would your index. The index? Not your index, sorry, your pinky. Little finger. Little finger. And I'm going to marry these together. Your sides. So 
obviously you want the pink and the white to meet perfectly. You don't need to cap your pink and your white in clear. Some people think that they need to do that. So notice I haven't touched the apex at this point. And what I would do is I would do the length on all of them last because then you can get them all the same. I've got a softer file to do the apex with. So I've got a 180 grit file because I want the apex there, but I don't want to completely take it away. If I went over with a 100 grit, it's going to be game over. And then I want to go over the entire nail with this 180 grit file, which will start to remove any deep demarcations. I'm looking down the barrel to see the curvature of this part. Right. I'm not concentrating on the very C curve just yet. And then I'm going to go to the 240 grip file. Oh, they're losing the name. I'm going to take this off because it's sliding. Two forty grit file again is going to take away, take away demarcations from the one eighty grit file. So imagine you like, do you know, when you I don't know if you've ever polished anything. Polish? I don't polish. I have slaves who do that. You know, like if you were polishing your car, and you go. No, from... I don't polish. Have you seen my car? Okay. It's got more dings in it than scratches in it, and I don't know what. Well, even if you take it somewhere to be polished, okay, right, okay. they will go down the grits to the finest grit. Yeah. When they polish. I've seen things polished online. Yeah. So it's Think that. It's that kind like of thing. Takes a penny and polishes a penny. Have you ever seen that? No. Is it Maggie? Oh, it's mental, yeah. You use all of these different like concoctions. What, like different, different liquids? Liquids, stuff, really? Yeah. Look under the nail to see if you can continue filing because you want to look at the thickness of the nail because you don't want to file away your white. So then we want to do the lengths. So we've got about a mil to take off. Keep it nice and square. When you're doing the free edge, it's always important to turn the hand as well, like this. So I'm looking at what it looks like in this direction as well. Because some people file heavily on one side than they do on another. Top tip to get your C curve super neat is to get a sanding band or you can use the debug bit on a really high speed. The sanding band doesn't need to be on so high and you can go in 
and you can just put that underneath and it will actually thin out the very tip as well, the very tip of the product. And it'll make it perfectly circular. If you were using this, you can use this for different depths. Because if you've got, obviously, your pinky finger is going to be smaller. So that can be used for that. Your these debulk this. So because the e-file is already round, it's going to make underneath round. But if it was smaller, so a different size finger, you can use, can you see how it's circular? And obviously this is smaller. So if it was a smaller one, a smaller nail, you could adjust the C curve with that as well. Because the sanding band is only one size. One size don't fit all. So we can now buff this nail. So buffing will help remove any of the demarcations. This is when you need to be careful. This is where I've smashed off the nail before by rushing and going like this. There are some competitions that require you to buff to a high shine. So you'd need a super shiner just to get that nice and shiny. So you don't put any top coat? No top coat, yeah. Pro Beauty ones, you can put your top coat on. So like if the Nail Olympia one, if you were buffing to a high shine and you had a gel product on your desk and you were doing acrylic, you wouldn't be able to have it on your desk because you've got to buff it to a high shine. I'm just going to kind of massage this nail. What you can do now is wipe over with cleanup solution. Top tip, if you are doing buff to a shine, wipe over with acetone. Oh, because that will smooth it out even more. Yeah, so if you've got acetone, it would melt the top surface and make it easier to shine because it smooths it out because you can kind of see us it's got a sheen on it already mm. yeah and that's just using acetone we're going to top coat now Pop that in the lamp, 
one thing that everybody forgets or they don't have time to do and it's really important because you'll lose marks for it is make sure you clean underneath the nail so we sometimes have lots of people come in with the most beautiful nails and we turn them over and we're like oh dear and they haven't cleaned underneath the nail so we want it free from any debris or anything obviously this is a bit different because it's on the other one hand And then you can finish with a bit of cuticle oil, depending on what competition it is. But do not oversaturate with oil. You just want a smidge. And what I would do is then wipe off the excess oil. So Again, if we think about the composition of the length here, matching the length here. So even if you've got an, a person that's got quite small hands and small nail beds, you're gonna take that into consideration. So if we look at the ruler and you had somebody that had 15 mil or even 10 mil nail beds, then you're gonna extend out by at least three to four mil to do your nail bed extension because we want to see the nail bed extension and then that is the same length that you need to do on the side here measuring from this high point to the end does that make sense yeah because i'm not sure i explained that so that's that's your guide then you want them all to be the same length depending on what competition it is everybody's different they might want all of them all of them to be exactly the same length so when we say that, we don't mean all of them to be the same length like this, because that would look a bit weird if they were all the same length like that. We mean each nail is the same length. Yeah, makes sense. I hope it does. I hope that helps you with your competition nails. Pink, people think pink and white is dead easy. Do you know like people come in the salon? Oh, they come in, I'll just have a quick French manicure and you're like, no. What? It's one of the hardest things to do when it comes to nails. Oh, also, we didn't break down this, the um, C curve. Let me just show you this. So, if we look at this angle, we can see the C curve. We want a 50% C curve, ideally for competition nails. So, 50% so of a circle. If you're doing salon, you can go 40 35% of a circle, that's absolutely fine. But seeing that, when that comes through and you see this gorgeous, deep C curve, that is like perfection. We love to see a deep C curve. Nice and thin on the free edge. That is what we're looking for. A nice deep smile line. We don't want to see, literally, we don't want to see like a ledge here. We don't want to see where that product ends. We want it to be seamless as if it's growing out of the finger, which is clearly impossible. However, like this, you can make the appearance that it's actually growing out of that person's finger. If only all our nails grew like that. Yeah. yeah. Side walls need to be straight. Don't want no scoopy uppy or no droppy downy. <laughs> Technical words. <laughs> um, we could go on and on and on about competition nails, but I just wanted to give some advice and share my knowledge with you guys. But like I said, read the rules. Ask for the score sheets before the competition and go through the score sheets before the competition. Preparation is key when you are doing a competition, okay? So yeah, I hope that um, helped you guys. Everything I've used today will be listed below. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram and all that shebang. And I'll see you guys in the next video. ta -ra -duk.